A two-headed brown trout and other deformities in Idaho Creek fish have been caused by toxic pollution. In Clear Lake, California, fish are showing up with warped faces caused by pollution from pesticides and mercury. And out in the Mojave Desert, the rare Devil's Hole pupfish are on the brink of extinction, and scientists are debating whether introducing new genes from nearby fish is the only hope to save them. These are disturbing mutations discovered in creatures from toxic lakes. A two-headed brown trout was found in a creek in southern Idaho, and it wasn't the only deformed fish in the area. Scientists found more trout with facial deformities, twisted fins, and defective eggs, and it all pointed to one thing, selenium pollution. Selenium is a metal that shows up naturally in the environment, but when it builds up from things like mining or coal burning, it becomes toxic. In this case, the pollution was traced back to operations run by J.R. Simplot, a massive agribusiness company that processes food and chemicals. They funded a study to look into the deformities, and while the report claimed that the selenium levels were safe, others strongly disagreed. Joseph Scorapa, a wildlife biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, said the study was biased and, quote, highly questionable. He pointed out that it completely skipped over the effects on birds and reptiles tiles and seriously downplayed the deformity rates in fish. Meanwhile, in Tennessee, politicians started pushing bills to deregulate selenium altogether. See, the coal industry has a stake in this too. What's happening in one Idaho creek is just one part of a much bigger picture. There's this fish called the Clear Lake Hitch that only lives in Clear Lake, California. And some of them have developed a mutation known as pug-headedness, which you can probably form a pretty clear image of in your head. They end up with steep, almost boxy foreheads, bulging eyes, and an underdeveloped upper jaw. Basically, the top half of the mouth doesn't grow right, so it ends up shorter than the bottom, making the whole face look warped. Scientists think this is thanks to pollution, mainly from pesticides and mercury that have built up in the lake over time. The hitch used to be everywhere in this area. They were a big part of the diet for indigenous tribes like the Pomo, and back in the day, you could see massive runs every spring. These days, even in a good year, only a few thousand show up to spawn. Some years, barely any. Out in the middle of the Mojave Desert, there's this tiny deep pool called Devil's Hole. It looks like just a weird blue hole in the ground surrounded by dry rocks, but it's actually a deep water-filled crack in the earth, kind of like a natural well. And inside this tiny pool lives one of the rarest fish in the world, the Devil's Hole pupfish. These fish are tiny, smaller than your pinky finger, and they've been living here for thousands of years. The water is warm, nearly 90 degrees, and has very little oxygen. The fish need that exact setup to survive. It's a very specific environment, but they have adapted perfectly until recently. Right now, there are only about 75 of these fish left, and scientists are worried. Their genes are a mess. Scientists have found what's called genetic load. Basically, these fish are drowning in bad DNA, and there's no way for natural selection to clean it out. This leads to what's called an extinction vortex where the genetic problems make it even harder to survive. Back in the 70s, conservationists built backup tanks to protect the pupfish in case the wild ones died out. But at one of these tanks, some pupfish from a nearby but different species snuck in. Their babies mixed with the DNA and grew way faster and healthier, even sprouting extra fins. The hybrids exploded in number, which showed biologist Andy Martin that introducing new genes was probably the solution here. Martin thinks the devil's whole pupfish could be saved if they bring in a few of these cousins from a spring just a few miles away. But some conservationists hate this idea. To them, it's not really saving this specific species of fish if you're changing their DNA. Nano silver. That sounds like an anime attack, but this is a real particle causing mutations in fish. Silver nanoparticles, tiny particles smaller than viruses, are used in over 200 consumer products because they kill bacteria on contact. Scientists are now worried these little particles might be messing with the environment and wildlife. When silver nanoparticles wash down drains, they end up in rivers, lakes. Darren Ferguson, a researcher at the University of Utah, Utah tested these particles on zebrafish embryos in the lab and found some pretty scary mutations. Some of them became, quote, extremely distorted, almost making a number nine or a comma instead of a linear 
fish, he said. The particles cause deformities in eyes, tails, and most disturbingly, their hearts. And here's something pretty scary. Zebrafish actually have organs kind of similar to ours, so this could hint at risks for people too. Scientists still don't know exactly what this means for us or the planet long term, but the Environmental Protection Agency said the same special properties that make nanoscale materials useful are also properties that may cause some nanoscale materials to pose potential risks. In California's Kesterson Reservoir, a big environmental problem popped up because of selenium pollution. Selenium is a naturally occurring element, but when it builds up too much, it becomes toxic. In Kesterson, the water got contaminated with high selenium levels, mainly from irrigation runoff. The fish there, especially embryos, started coming out with serious deformities. Some had messed up eyes or were just missing them completely. There were deformities in their fins, the brain. Scientists call this cluster of problems Kesterson syndrome. And it's not limited to fish because the birds eating them also suffered. Birds have been found with deformed beaks, legs, wings. In Oneida Lake, New York, walleye fish started appearing with tumors. This comes from exposure to chlorinated wastewater effluent. That's water discharged from treatment plants containing chlorine byproducts. So these chemicals don't break down easily and can build up in the lake. These tumors are obviously a sign that pollution in the lakes has carcinogenic effects, meaning it can cause cancer. Walleye are especially important too because they're popular for fishing. So this is worrying not only scientists, but fishermen and the communities who depend on the lake. Back in the 70s, a coal-fired power plant in North Carolina started dumping wastewater full of selenium into Bellew's Lake. Over time, it completely wrecked the fish population. By the early 2000s, the number of fish species in the lake dropped from 24 down to just six. Most of the fish couldn't reproduce anymore. One study found that 19 of the original 20 species couldn't produce any surviving offspring. Only smaller fish that ate plankton, like mosquito fish, managed to stick around. They weren't affected as badly by the selenium buildup. Eventually, the plants stopped dumping the waste into the lake in 1986. Levels of selenium in the water dropped way down, and they even restocked the lake with sport fish like bass and bluegill. But even 10 years later, the fish were still having trouble reproducing. That's because selenium sinks to the lake bed and slowly leaks back into the food chain especially if storms stir up the sediment. To make things even worse, some illegally introduced Alabama bass in 2011. They started outcompeting the native bass, especially largemouth. Now state officials are trying to get rid of them by removing catch limits, but the damage is already being done. In the Great Lakes, especially Lake Ontario and Lake Michigan, scientists have seen lake trout hatching with strange deformities. They found fish with weird faces, swollen yolk sacs, which are the little sacs attached to fish embryos that hold the nutrients they need to grow, and they have bloated areas around the heart, symptoms known as blue sac disease. It's caused by exposure to dioxins and toxic chemicals that build up in the water over years from things like industrial waste and pesticides. These toxins settle in the sediment, but work their way up the food chain. Fish at the top, like lake trout, get hit hardest because they eat smaller, contaminated fish. The damage mostly shows up in the embryos, so it's affecting reproduction more than anything else. Many of the baby fish just don't survive. These deformities were first spotted decades ago and are still showing up in areas where dioxin levels are high. Even though regulations have cut down on the amount of dioxins going into the lakes, the old contamination is still there. Now, we've talked about all the bad stuff going on with fish, but what about some interesting adaptations? Well, Atlantic tomcod in the Hudson River developed a mutation that lets them survive in waters full of toxins. For decades, the river was basically a chemical dumping ground. Chemical that usually kill or will seriously harm fish, but scientists have noticed that tomcod have developed a genetic mutation that changed how they process pollutants. Normally, these chemicals get into a fish's cells and start causing damage, but this mutation messes with the pathway the pollutants usually use. Instead, the fish store the toxins in their fat, basically locking them away where they can't cause a whole lot of harm. This trait didn't show up everywhere. It's specific to tomcod that live in polluted water. The downside, though, is that these fish are now heavily specialized to survive in dirty, polluted water. If the environment changes again, even if it's for the better, they might not adapt fast enough. And they're still concerned about predators eating them and taking in those same toxins up the food chain, including people who eat the 
fish. Killfish are tiny, colorful fish found along the East Coast, often in places no other fish would want to be, like New Jersey's Newark Bay or Virginia's Elizabeth River, where there's a lot of toxic waste. These areas are loaded with dioxins and heavy metals, but somehow killfish are doing pretty well, all things considered. Turns out they've evolved an insane resistance, up to 8,000 times more than normal. Researchers collected hundreds of killfish from different polluted sites and sequenced their genomes. And what they found was that each population had developed similar mutations in the same genes that basically turned off the normal response to these toxins. This kind of resistance is only possible because killfish have super high genetic diversity. For other species that don't have that kind of variation, adapting like this isn't really an option. Again though, there's still food for birds and bigger fish, so there's still a lot of worry as to how all that stored up pollution could affect the rest of the food chain. And I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.